Hello. Welcome to Cuddle Queen Jean. I'm Jean. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm the founder of Cuddle Sanctuary. Cuddle Sanctuary has been cuddling since 2014. And this year, in 2020, it's been a real kind of fascinating journey to, to kind of figure out how how can we connect when cuddlers most often connect through soothing platonic touch? How do we do that now, you know, during these times? So this is an experiment to connect and I hope you enjoy it. What we're going to do today is I'm going to share with you a story and you can choose to participate however works for you, but you are welcome to use it as a bedtime story and to allow my voice to soothe you into slumber. You don't need to make it to the end of this video. In fact, my story might, might sometimes meander and I welcome you to allow your yourself and your mind to wander and your own thinking to meander and consider the idea that the destination isn't so important as the the process you know the way our way of traveling together this video is called winter cocoon and I invite you to cocoon with me. If you'd like, you can get headphones. Now would be a great time if you're, if you're cozying up for a nap or a night's slumber to get yourself comfortable and, and situated. Maybe there's a pillow of pillows blanket. You can wiggle yourself into place. You can move and change at any time. This is your time. The philosophy of the whole cuddle queen jean concept is this idea that I'm trying to live in my own life is to treat myself like royalty, like a royal and wanted and cherished guest. And I invite you to participate in that with me. So one time in my 20s, I received a letter from my friend, Rachel. But her note said, we need to go on a road trip. Come with me. What was really special about this friend is that she was very intuitive and she trusted her own gut feelings and she had this feeling like we needed to go on a road trip and I gotta tell you I didn't I didn't always make like last minute travel decisions at that time I was more of a thinker and a planner. But f for some reason, maybe it was just her certainty. She also had kind of a magical quality about her. So she was really um, persuasive. <laughs> so she drove a truck and picked me up. plan was to go to um, the Grand Canyon, which I had never been, and to go to Sedona, Arizona, which I had never been. So what inspired me to share this story with you as I think about a winter cocoon is that when we got to the Grand Canyon, 
I experienced cold like I'd never experienced before. Here's the deal. Because we were traveling, we were traveling on a budget, okay? And, and so we didn't have a hotel planned for the Grand Canyon. We arrived late at night and we actually went into, maybe it's a park, but we basically went in. There was this sense of maybe we shouldn't do this, you know? Um, but it was kind of <laughs> exciting too. But our plan was to sleep in the car. So Rachel found um, a parking spot, it was just empty. This is like dark, dark. And now keep in mind, this is the Grand Canyon, so it's not like there's city lights, you know? It felt very remote and quiet. So the, her truck was big enough that we could be inside of it, but maybe she, maybe she bent some, you know, like the seat down or something, because I don't remember being... I remember being able to stretch out completely. But the problem is that I did not have the proper sleeping bag for an overnight in this temperature. It was such a hard night. And I want to tell you one thing I remember scraping off ice from her window from the inside do you know what I mean? inside of the car was ice now before I you know complain too much the truth of the matter is I wasn't hypothermic like I didn't I didn't have a frostbite but I will tell you my internal organs were cold and I do not believe I slept at all. I just suffered. <laughs> it was so crappy. But here's the magic part of it. And this has happened a few times in my life and each time it happens it's magic. It's, it's arriving at a place in nature at night when you can't see it. And then the sun comes up and your robot's eye was in the middle of it all. You know, the Grand Canyon. The reason I wanted to tell you this story is not for the suffering part for the cozy cocoon part, which is finally here. We got out of the car and went to a lodge. I looked it up so I could tell you the name of it. Grand Canyon Lodge at the North Rim. We were certain be going to this lodge, but they still let us in. It was beautiful and fancy. High ceilings and rock. Rocks like stacked up into the walls and wood and just lodgy and warm and absolutely beautiful. warm. The juxtaposition of sleeping in her truck to being seated in this beautiful, beautiful lodge was spectacular. It was so comfortable. I was in a state of bliss at this breakfast. But here's what I remember. Just 
started watering as I considered telling you this next piece. You know how at a nice dinner the server might bring you a basket of fresh rolls and you're like, yeah, yum, yum, yum. I have never experienced anything similar to that. I am remembering I went to a deli and they gave you pickles and I was like this is fabulous to snack on these pickles but at this breakfast the server came with a basket of fresh assorted muffins and little containers of jam and jelly and this is before makes me think sometimes that going through physical hardship and then having comfort after that hardship makes the comforting thing so much better. The rest of our trip was absolutely eventful. When we went to Sedona, I don't know if you know about Sedona, but one can get a map of places in nature around Sedona that it's suggested have great natural power. So it's very woo-woo and airy-fairy. So forgive me if that's not your bag, but we were totally into it. And what there's a word for it, they call it vortex or the plural would be vortices I think so we wanted to find one and explore so we had a map and we're really excited about being in Sedona and having an adventure right so <laughs> this is so cool it started to mist, you know, not necessarily rain, but sort of mist, light rain. And maybe I think we were walking back to our car at this point after basically a little mini hike. And we saw a double rainbow. I don't want to exaggerate here. Was it a double rainbow? Or simply an amazing rainbow. Well, I want to tell you that if you ever saw that viral video of that guy seeing a double rainbow, this is how it felt to see that rainbow. Because <laughs> just as we saw it, <laughs> we discovered that we were walking past Rainbow Lane literally called Rainbow Lane that was the street and we're just like looking at the rainbow and seeing Rainbow Lane and we're like what <laughs> I want to be quiet <laughs> but we thought um, that maybe seeing rainbows right there was like really common and that's why it was called Rainbow That's kind of gives you a sense of what a lovely and fun and spontaneous journey that it was. What remains for me is the cold and then the warmth of breakfast, the discomfort and the suffering and then the bliss and the joy of seeing a rainbow and now you know I can't even remember if it was a double rainbow but the joy of like rainbow lane I feel kind of a t 
tear in my eye, like right there. I feel really lucky to have good memories like that. And it's a reminder to me that having spontaneous moments with friends and memories like that, like, that's precious. And sharing it with you is really, really sweet. I think that in these pandemic times when maybe we can't see the people we want to see or travel to the places we want to travel to, it can be really special or valuable to, to reminisce, to remember, to tell stories. Yeah, I want to thank you for inspiring this opportunity to share that story with you. I wish you a sweet, sweet rest.